2000 Elo is on the horizon for episode 8 of our rapid rating climb series on chess.com and we are currently sitting at, I believe around 1900 Elo after a bit of a crazy game in the last episode and we have the black pieces against Eid One Knight from I knew that was Cameroon I don't know why I even scrolled over that we're 1850 Elo currently. And I don't think it's going to take that long to get to 2000. I mean, this guy, we're not going to get that much Elo off because he's a fair bit lower rated. But we will have to win first. Because if we lose, we're going to lose 31 Elo, which will be a significant dent in our run. So, let's take. <clears throat> After the knight takes back, we could go knight to f6. And after takes, take with the e-pawn. I've been enjoying the Karpov variation, which is knight d7 and then knight f6, so that you can take back with the knight, which I think I'm going to do. And I love the Karo Khan. It's one of my favorite openings, so we are going to enjoy it. He goes c3, which is a move, but I think c3 is more of a move after knight f6 immediately. With knight d7 first, I don't think the pawns go... Ooh, yeah, that's a strange move. He drops the knight back. So we could go knight b6. We could also go h5, h4. The knight could drop into f5 because the bishop's blocked. But it's not doing anything from the f5 square. So let's start with h5. I'd love to play h4. And try and force the knight back. Because if h4 and the knight advances. Then we just need to move this knight to a square like b6. And we'll open up the bishop's attack on it. I don't know why my arrows are being so weird. Apologies. Bishop g5 doesn't stop this. So let's play it. Because if he takes. Then we just take back with the knight. Now that attacks the h4 pawn. Which is true. But if he takes it, I don't even mind. I don't think I mind. Now we could move this knight to b6 to open up an attack on the knight. e6 attacks the knight and gets our bishop ready for development. But if knight takes... Queen b6? Hmm. I feel like I want to get this bishop out of the pawn chain. Get it to f5. So. Okay, let's take a bit of a think here. I need to be accurate. Need to be accurate right now. Now we also have the move knight to e5 attacking the bishop. Ooh. And if bishop takes, then knight b6 opens up an attack on the knight. And when the knight moves, we can take the bishop. And if the knight goes to g3 to attack our knight on e4, then we can just take the bishop. And after knight takes e4, recapture with the rook. So I think knight e4, I think that punishes this setup. I just needed a bit of time to think there because this is a very strange position. Normally, like way back in the opening, in this position, knight takes is just automatic. Also, the bishop now can't just trade itself off for the knight if it gets stuck, which is a nice bonus kind of making it a bit awkward for our opponent we took a very long time on that move but that is the beauty of 15 minute rapid we have we have the luxury and yeah he can't take here and he sees why now i don't see a problem with knight to f6 opening up an attack on this knight and defending our knight in the center so we're going to do it attack this with the bishop now 
And I assume it dropped back to like E3, which looks incredibly passive. It does stop our bishop from coming out to the F5 and G4 squares. But I was trying to trap this bishop with a move like G5, but it has the E5 square. We could play knight D5, but I feel like that just helps our opponent. I don't really want to trade like that. We could play knight h5, attacking the bishop. And if bishop to e5, then we have f6. So, knight h5, where does the bishop go? If g3 is played, we take and ruin the structure. So, knight h5... If the knight goes to h3, we take with the bishop. If the knight goes to e2 to defend. One, it cramps his position massively. But also, I think then we can play g5. Because if the bishop goes to e5, we've freed up the f6 square so that we can play f6. My only concern is knight to h5, and then something like queen c2. So knight eight, oh come on arrows, knight h5, queen c2 attacking this knight, which is now undefended. Bishop f5 isn't a move, because his knight on e3 controls the f5 square. And if we play the pawn to f5, then e5 will always be an outpost for the bishop. So, and if we drop the knight back to d6, he can take it with the bishop. And if we drop the knight back to f6, then the e5 square is now available because f6 is no longer a move. Because the knight's on f6. So knight h5, queen c2. I was thinking about taking on f2 first, but then the queen recaptures and defends the bishop. So, tricky, tricky, tricky. Knight h5, queen c2. Then what? What if we just take, and then queen takes e4, e4. Then we go back to g6, and just claim the bishop pair. I think that's the worst case scenario. And that's if he finds queen c2, which is a tricky move to find. But let's keep calculating. I think because I've seen that in the one line I'm worried about, we're still good. We are, we are playing the black pieces, bearing in mind, you know. If I'm still happy with the position in the worst case scenario, and every other scenario looks good for me, then I should go for it. The problem with a move like bishop to d3 or queen d3 is that it allows knight takes f2 first and the queen on c2 defends it and will defend the bishop. I did miss this way of doing it. Accomplishes the same goal though and it's kind of better because it defends the bishop as well. Maybe we just claim the bishop pair and get out of there. I don't see how we defend the knight without playing f5, which is a horrible move. Weakens way too many light squares. Let's just claim the bishop pair. Worst case scenario. Again. Queen takes. And then just knight back to f6. I don't see a problem with that. There's no better way to defend it, so hey, we come out with a dark squared bishop to the good. Which is great because we want to build a light squared complex anyway. Okay, I think queen to a5 is a natural move, just hitting a2. If king b1, we can maybe play bishop to e3. Sorry, e6. If bishop e6, he can go c4 to block the diagonal, or go b3, or go a3. So he's got a lot of defences. 
I don't know where our bishop's going, so this knight's doing a good job of controlling the squares that I want to go to. g5 is a move, because our queen defends it from afar. Is it that good? Queen f3. Um, I don't see... Let's see what we're gaining from forcing that. We could go g5, queen f3, g4, and if the queen returns to f4, I'm going to do it. Because then we have bishop to h6. This looks like it's weakening our king, but our king is quite safe. King is very safe. And we can always castle queenside if we want. Let's push. Let's push. I feel like, although we have the same number of pieces developed, our bishops can get out so easily that I feel like we're, we're, we're ahead in development in a way. Okay, just making sure the pin on this pawn is irrelevant. The knight can't infiltrate anywhere, which is important. Could go rook g8, just defending this pawn. This knight is so annoying because it stops bishop f5. Bishop h6 is a move, which I'm going to play. This is just putting the bishop on a nice diagonal. It also means I can bring this bishop to e6. Again, hitting this pawn, but it means that I don't have to move my e-pawn. And my king is very, very safe then. And the bishop's very nicely supported because this bishop comes out to this diagonal okay see that threatens knight d6 and my queen but i can drop my queen back to c7 and defend everything also it might be coming into e5 but whatever i'd like to throw in bishop f5 check first just to force the king over we could even bring our queen to d5 but then it could be vulnerable in the future. It does monitor the g2 square though, which I like. Ooh, then h 3s on the cards. Okay, yeah, queen d5 is nice. And again, it stops knight d6 check. We're developing a bit of an initiative here, which I like. We've got our bishop sniping on the long diagonals. Doing a great job. Hmm. Good move. I don't really want to play... Well, I don't want to take, because that just helps my opponent develop, right? If I go g3... Takes, takes... I'm just opening the h file for him. And his knight can always come out. I like the look of the move h3. Trying to break the chain apart at the center. If he takes here. Then we have bishop takes. Knight f3 blocking. If we take here then bishop takes. And I think he's okay. Is there anything better here? Here. If we take here, then bishop takes. Don't like that. H3. I think we should go for H3. It feels like the right move to me. Here. Here. Knight F3. Now, if he takes here... I didn't actually calculate this. Oh, I think we can just take on f3. Because queen takes is met with bishop e4. So here, here, knight takes is basically forced. Friends, checkmate. Valid move. We could just always just go e6. Which I think makes the most sense. We could play bishop e6. But like I said in the previous variation, the bishop's useful. Because he can go to the e4 square. So let's go e6. It weakens the d6 square, but our queen is covering that. OK. 
Okay. So what about this? These are some very weak pawns now as well. Our bishop looks like it could be good on the f4 square in the future. We'll also monitor d6 from there and open up our rook on the h file. I'd like to castle if I get a move to do so. Ah, this is no longer a move because e6 took away the defense of the knight. That's very smart. Very smart. Now we could go knight to e4 though. Could go knight e4. And the bishop can't go to g2 because we take the knight. Let's think. Let's think. If we if we trade queens and then go bishop to e4. No, that's too easy to defend. Is it? Wait, is it though? Because knight d2, we take it with our dark squared bishop, and then we win the rook. Bishop e2. Yeah, see, bishop g2, I was thinking rook g8. But bishop e2... I don't see what we do. Change the queens, bishop e4, bishop e2. Mm. Thinking rook g8, rook g2, but he just has rook g1. Queenside castle. I don't want to trade the queens, especially since we're a pawn down. I mean, this isn't really very scary, but... Let me just check. Knight e4, bishop d3. No, I think we probably have to exchange queens because of that variation. Opponent's playing very, very well. Oh, this is also on the cards now. So I think we might have to castle queenside to stop that. Yeah, otherwise he's just going to take the bishop if we put it on e4. So let's cover that square. Again, we're down a pawn, but these pawns aren't impressing anyone. They're more of a liability than a strength, because they might just tie down white's pieces. Bishop f4 is now a move, targeting this. Rook g7, is that annoying? Maybe. We should probably contest the file. But then if he exchanges, he can go knight d6. So that's not good. We could start with king c7, defending that, and rook g7 isn't a move because our bishop covers it. So let's just stop any ideas there. Okay, now the knight attacks f6. Bishop g6 isn't a move because he just takes it. This is difficult to defend, it really is. Can't go to d7. We can go to h7. I don't want to put a rook on f8. At least on h7, the rook stays on the h file. Might have to play some passive defense for a little bit. Especially considering the time situation. But we can lash out with moves like b5. We can try and get this knight into the game. That's a good move. Here... Knight to g4. Don't like that. Again, I can't really drop it back. We could take it with the bishop. Bishop takes, rook takes. But ugh, our dark squared bishop is one of the best things about our position. Like, that was what our whole maneuver for was in the opening. And it covers... Oh, I guess our rook covers g7 now. Here, here. It's a problem. That's a big problem. Can't allow that. What about here, here, here? Doesn't look pretty, but it might, it might work. 
Because H2 is very loose. H3 is loose. Could play knight to E4 because the pawn would support it. Look for moves like c5. Don't think we have better. I mean, our pawn structure is going to be very ugly, but this pawn could actually be kind of um, dangerous for white. And he doesn't take the bishop. Wow. Really? What about knight here? If this, we'd love to see, because of knight b4. That doesn't look right from my opponent. If I take, then he undoubles his pawns. I could go to e4, but then bishop d3. I mean, he can go bishop d3 anyway, but it's more effective. If I go to e4, so let's move the knight. Again, our rook monitors f7. Our bishops are now real nice. I don't know why he didn't take. I mean, we weren't completely losing in the position or anything, but we were certainly worse. <laughs> as a given. <clears throat> okay. Could favour us. Maybe he's trying to get access to the f6 square by taking this knight. We could take on h3. Knight here. Mm. Don't like that. We could just go knight b6 attacking the bishop. Let's do it. Need to play quicker. Bishop d3. I think we probably have to exchange. We don't have a choice. But then his knight goes back. And then h3 hangs, because f7 is no longer under attack. So then we win the pawn back. And h2, again, is it a liability, is it a strength? Our opponent is not using much time, but he is thinking while I'm using all my time. So it's a good job we've got 10 second increments here. We've used like over a minute on quite a few moves. But... Our position, I don't even think, is that much worse. I don't think, because our bishops are very strong. Some very strong bishops. Hmm, okay. That's an odd decision. What about c5? c5, you can just take it, though. I think I'm just going to play a5 to threaten a4 and maybe a3. Just to pose some problems. Mm -hmm. I don't want to take the knight, obviously. So I think we just drop back to g5. If the knight goes to e3 attacking the bishop, I think we're going to have to take it. Don't think we have a choice. Then that also means that our bishop will be staring at h3. And if knight here takes, takes, then a4, bishop d1. It's quite nice. Probably take, oh no, the rook defends. But then we could go knight to d5 attacking the rook. And then we can look for a3, because if takes, then c3 will hang. Okay, defends the pawn. Let's push. Also keeps an eye on c3 if our knight comes to d5. We force the bishop back. It's progress. This is a move. Here, if the knight comes to g6... Is it getting trapped? No, it has f4 to get away. f6 might make sense, though. I'm going to play it. 
again, we're causing problems. We also win the c4 square when the knight moves. If this rook leaves the back rank, there's ideas of c5 with the bishop on the other side of the rook. Again, a free is a move, especially if we win the c4 square. Because if takes, we can plant the knight on c4. Okay, he moves back. Could be going to c5. c3 is undefended now, though. Which is useful. Now, we could take here and then take on a2, but I'm not a massive fan. I don't think it's that great. This is a move. And knight takes... Oh wait, no, the, the the rook just controls the e4 square. Can't do that. <laughs> what am I saying? Um, our game is really laggy right now for no reason. Let's go a3. We can actually play rook to a8. Trying to win this and get some counterplay. We are allowing the bishop to b3, which might be a mistake. We can cover up with knight d5 though. But I think we just need to pose some practical problems. We've got pressure on the queen on the king side. Our bishops are putting pressure on. I mean, don't get me wrong. Definitely got a worse position. I'd be shocked if we didn't. This is a move. Let's take here with check first. I think this works to defend. Because he doesn't have a dark squared bishop. Could go here, and we probably have to take. Get in there. Importantly, our rook covers b7. It's very, <laughs> very much um, a very fragile position we've got going. But again, we're just posing some practical problems. Ooh. Wait, is that blunder? What about this? How do you defend the bishop? If you come here or here, we have knight to d2 winning the rook. Or if king b1, we even have knight to a3 winning the bishop. But I'd rather win the rook. I think. I mean, I don't see why we wouldn't rather have a rook than a bishop. I think he just blundered. And there we go. I, th I think we're good now. Because I don't see where the king moves. Our bishop cuts off the c1 square crucially. Which putting the bishop on h6 ages ago is paying off now. And yeah, I don't know. Our opponent let us have a bit much there. Let's just keep it simple. And when we take this rook, we'll be attacking this rook as well. So... Yeah. This rook hangs. So it's not even like he can just go down the exchange. I think he's just losing a full rook. Wow. That was a very difficult game. Very difficult game. Remember, our rook also defends b7. So there's no knight takes b7 check. Yeah, here we can just take his rook. Again, if we had to take there, maybe he had some counterplay, but that is not the case. Our rook hangs, not going to lie, I completely missed that. But I think we're just, I think we're up a piece? What? Oh no, we're up an exchange. Ah, no. Okay, I messed up there. I didn't notice that. We're still good though. We're still good. So, he is threatening knight b7 now. We have rook h8. Attack the bishop, and then we can play b6. If he goes knight b7, then we have king c7, and two pieces will be hanging. We're going to win h3, which is a big deal. His king is also weak, so there could be some checks. If we can win these... Um, pawns we're also very good because our f pawn can always push i think i made this a bit too difficult on myself 
here was there a better move take intermezzo rook e6 king c7 I think this was far better for us. But okay. Okay. Let's let's just take. Keep it very, very simple. Um Let's go B six, attack the knight. If knight A four attacking, then oh, I was just gonna go king to C seven. Or even B five. Now h3 hangs. Our bishop is kind of untouchable. His knights have no good way in. So these pawns are doing a great job of keeping them out. Do I? D yeah, I should take. I shouldn't allow the knight to come in. And I think the clinical approach... Mm, no, that's not actually that clinical. Oh, let's just go... F5. Because then H2 hang. Whoa. H2 hangs. A2 hangs. The knight isn't threatening anything. So let's take. And take. Knight can give a check. We drop back. Knight can give a check. We drop back. Defend B6. He's being a bit stubborn. Let's push. We've got to be careful not to blunder a knight fork. Knight f7, we have king to d5. And we get the classic thing where the knight is two diagonal steps away, which makes it very difficult for the knight to do anything. If we take, then knight takes, but we could just push which I think is far better. Now we have a passed pawn. Well, we have two passed pawns, actually. Here we move up. Knight's on an opposite color to the king, so the knight can't check the king on the next move, which is another configuration worth knowing. Knight's going to have to spend two moves to check the king. See, now it's threatening this. But I think the clinical approach is rook a3. Pinning the knight to the king. And when the king moves, we're just going to take the knight. And then we're going to push. Cut the king off from everywhere. So we're going to win the d4 pawn on the next move. And then c5 is going to hang. And then it's four pawns versus zero, which is an easy win, obviously. I'm sure this... I mean, everything is winning here, really. I'm sure b3 was just as winning. Forcing the king to move and then pushing our f pawn. And then here we can promote easily. But this is a very easy, like geometrically simple thing to do. Because we just cut the king off entirely. And we force a win of the d4 pawn. And then we keep both of these pawns alive. They're just going to march through. I think our opponent's realizing the game is now over. He played very well. Don't get me wrong. Played a really good game, but yeah, that's just game over. I definitely made a lot of mistakes. He definitely made a lot of mistakes. Let's check the game analysis. All right, so we got 82% accuracy. He had 72, which is not bad. Um, four great moves as well. So we made some only moves. This is a classic Caro. It's a classic Caro. Knight takes e4. Knight f6, I believe, is the main line. This is what I used to play. But takes, takes. This is a difficult position to play with black if white knows the correct setup, which is basically c3, bishop d3, queen c2, knight e2, bishop e3. It's very difficult to break with the black pieces because you have to try and make c5 work, which is kind of difficult, especially because white can push in a lot of cases and create a passed pawn. So, c3 was strange. Now here if he takes, we just get, ooh, 
take out the knight. That's the whole point of putting the knight on d7. We get a normal sort of caro position. I'm going to bring my bishop out, play e6, play bishop e7 or d6. Game goes on. So knight g3 is strange. I think h5 makes a lot of sense here because we're just threatening h4. Which, yeah, is just a good move because here we do find knight to e4, which is the best move. And my point is, if you try and take this, then I just kick the knight out. And once the knight moves, we win the bishop. And you obviously can't play knight takes because the bishop hangs. So bishop to f4 was a good move. Here, queen a5 is what the computer wants, which attacks the knight. And now with knight to e3, we can take on c3? Queen d2, we win the rook. So king e2, e5 is the only move. And if takes... Oh, because then this... Interesting. That's a wild line. Wow, no way anyone sees that. So knight f6, maybe not clinical. Once g6 or g5, straight away. Yeah, g5 here doesn't work as well. Because if g5, then the bishop has the e5 square, which was the problem, which is why I went knight to h5. Apparently bishop e5 here is very good for white. And if f6 is played... Uh... Oh, okay, and we can't move the knight because of bishop g6 check, and the knight hangs. Mm. Okay, queen f6, f3 is a good move though. We have to take on f4. And drop the knight back. Yeah. So castle. The computer wants g5 straight away because of... No way. What? Queen f4. Bishop h6. Queen moves. Bishop... Oh, the knight's pinned. That's crazy. That is a crazy line. I did not see that. Queen a5, king b1, and then g5 is the move. Okay, so I'm glad I found that. g5 is the idea, and g4, just taking a ton of space. Then bishop h6. These are all the best moves. Knight c4 attacks the queen. Apparently it's better not to throw the check in. Queen d5 straight away. But I don't think it makes a massive difference. Queen d5, f3. Here wants bishop e6, which I did consider, because the knight now can't move because of checkmate on a2. Hmm. But I don't see what we're accomplishing after b3. Okay, wants queen d8, or bishop, bishop f4. Well, what about if queen d8 and he just takes? Then knight d5, looking at f4. This is not a human way to play. This is very, very strange. You can see that it's difficult for white to move, but for a human to find this would be very difficult. h3 I thought made sense. Here, bishop e6 is better. e6 gave away the advantage because of that line where the knight hangs. Yeah, bishop e6 or queenside castle. This is a mistake because now we can take, and after I take back. Oh, you have to go knight there. So queen takes is a mistake. Because of king e7? What? 
So I guess now we are threatening bishop e4 because the knight is defended. But what if he just trades? Is he not just up a pawn? Oh, wait, no, because bishop e4. A knight there blocking. And we just have too much momentum. If the bishop defends the knight... This is very good. See, yeah, because if we get to take here, then we secure the e4 square. Whereas in the game, we didn't, we couldn't do that. And putting a piece on e4 was very difficult, because we had to move our bishop back. So queen takes f3. We do have the advantage. But castling gives it away. We need to go king e7. Okay. King up. Okay, nice CE5. Here it wants to put a rook on F8 to defend the F7 pawn. But knight moves. Oh, I should have just taken. And after rook takes. C5. Knight E4. I don't know why I didn't just take, actually. Strange decision. And obviously he should take me. I'm not lost, but he's so much better. Even just bishop d3 attacking. There, there. This is a very difficult position for me, because f7 is going to fall. If I take here. Okay, this is an odd line for a human to go into, though, because... Why would you do two rooks versus a rook, a bishop and a knight? There's no need. But, yeah, knight 3 e4 was not good. And knight d5 is the best move. Just because you can't trade knights. If you trade knights, then the weakness is fixed and white is good. White is absolutely fine here. So you've got to decline the trade. Here I'm now better, after rook f8, which I did not play. Rook f8, I guess, allows my rook to take on h3, and there's no actual way to defend it. Okay, I guess, and if you take, then I mean, it's just two bishops versus, versus two knights, which should always favour me. But this isn't a bad idea. With a5. Again, I'm low on time, so I need to just make moves. Here, once we take, but bishop g5 is also fine, if not better. Rook defends the pawn, a4, bishop d1, and a3. a3 should be played first. Okay, okay, okay. But I thought f6 just posed some practical problems. So after the knight retreats, then we can take it and go e5. So the pawn can't take us to rook hangs. That's cool. That's a cool idea. And the rook can't move because otherwise we win a pawn. So we kind of gluing white's position together. He's got to find some really strange moves like rook f1 to hold this. Or bishop c2. I guess they make sense. But it's a tough position. Didn't spot this. a3 is still good. And knight c5 is not good. Because we now take with check. Knight c4 check immediately. Is good. And after king to a1. I didn't see what we do. Knight d2? Really? And what if the rook moves? Oh, bishop h4. Here, here. So, he's got nothing better than to do this. Oh, but then he just wins my rook back. So that's not even that good for me. King d6 is only a bad move if our opponent goes king b3. And who's going to play that? 
Bishop c2 is just a straight up blunder though, because of knight b4. And like I was saying, if the king moves to b3 to keep an eye on the bishop, knight d2. If the king goes back to b1, like in the game, then knight d2. And if the king goes back to a1, then we just win the bishop. Classic, like, using your king as a defender is very risky, especially since I've managed to open up lines against it. So just throwing the A-pawn down the board actually quite worked in my favour in this game. So, yeah, it's just completely winning now, but I think we kind of threw it because we just need to take. And we and it's so easy now. Rook e6, king c7, the knight's under attack. So if the knight moves to get away, b6, knight goes back, we just up a rook. We're up a full rook. Knight takes e1. I just I just didn't see my rook was hanging. But it's still very winning because we force a trade really. And we're up an exchange still. And yeah, just taking we're up a lot of pawns at this point. And the conversion is quite easy. Don't blunder anything. And then just simplify. And we win the game. So I've, I I made that very difficult for myself in all in all honesty. But we come away with the win and we are now verging on nineteen hundred again, going for two thousand. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you watched till the end you know you gotta hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.